It means that signal. We need more power. Welcome to another Voice of E board game review. I am your host, Illinois Miller, and today I'm looking at Escape, The Curse of the Temple from Queen Games. Escape is a game designed for one to five players. It's designed by Christian Edmondson Otsby. I was a bit leery when I first looked at Escape. After all, haven't we already had multiple Escape from an Aztec Temple type games? And many of those were actually pretty good, so the odds were against this particular game especially for those who have already had their quota of Indiana Jones type games. However, this game is different. Let's see what the box says. You are adventurers trapped inside a cursed temple. You must activate the magic stones in the temple chambers in order to banish the curse. You have only ten minutes to do so before the temple collapses. Don't sit still for a second. Start running now and you just might. Escape. Escape is a real-time game. Instead of playing the game in rounds, each player rolls his five dice as quickly as he can without waiting for his teammates. That's what the box says. Let's take a look inside the box. Here we've got a standard layout for the game set up. I just wanted to point out one thing. This is the box lid. I mean the box bottom where all the components fit into. Look at how that is designed. I mean, is that cool or what? I mean, you can take this thing, and I thought for sure this game would have some components where you, like, have to put your meeple on the top, and he's like, oh, no, oh, ah. but no, it's just there to look cool. It's not involved in the game at all. But, man, it's really cool looking. So, apart from that, the game is basically a tile game where you're going around and you're trying to discover the exit to the temple. You obviously are going to explore and discover new tiles, and then eventually in the tile stack, you're going to find the exit tile, and then you will need to escape the temple by rolling certain things. The game comes with a bunch of basic tiles for the basic game. There's nothing fancy on these. It's basically a room with different symbols on them. And this describes what you need to roll on your dice in order to enter this particular room. And that's all there is to it. It also has these gem symbols. If you go into a room with a gem symbol, you need to do this action. Roll four of those red torches, and then you can place a gem there. And that's what you're trying to do initially throughout the game, is place enough gems in order to enable you to escape at the end of the game. You see, because you have this card, as you can see, I have seven gems on it at the moment. I'll give you a second to count. And this is the setup for a single player game. Yes, it can play one to five players. So what happens is if you find one of these rooms that you can place a gem in, you roll the thing that you're supposed to roll, and then you place it in that room. And now there's only six gems on here. Well, the reason this is important is at the end of the game, when you're trying to get out of the temple in this final exit room, you need to roll a certain number of uh, symbols on the dice in order to actually get out of the temple. And it's based on how many of these gems are still sitting on this card. So if you only have three gems on there, you need to roll, I think they're blue keys. Uh, so you need to roll three blue keys in order to get out of the temple. So you keep rolling, keep rolling until you get those three blue keys. You have to do it before the time is up. If you don't, well then, you're dead. And if one person loses, everybody loses. So just keep that in mind. The rules are uh, pretty well done. And they're fairly simple. I mean, look at these rules. This is it. It also comes with like rules for the expansion, which I'm already using all the time. So, back to the game. You have your little peepers. 
Are they cool? I think this one is the white peoples. This is the blue peoples. Okay, meeples, but they're Indiana Jones meeples. See? Now, you also have these dice. These dice have various symbols on them. And you get a bunch of these dice because every player gets five of them. So, you got to have at least 25 dice, right? Although, if you're playing a single player game, you get to roll seven. Seven dice. Yes, and they have different symbols. Black tiki's are bad. That's just what I call them. Yellow tiki's are good. And then the others are just things you have to roll. Just FYI, in order to discover a new room, you have to roll exactly two running dudes. Two. And then you can discover the new room. Alright, so how does this game work anyway? Well, it comes with a CD. See this CD? And this CD has three track, uh, two tracks on it that are timed for exactly ten minutes. And you put it in your convenient CD player, and you play a track. And after 20 seconds, the game will say, Escape! And that's when everybody starts rolling frantically, trying to do all kinds of stuff. Now, if you don't have a CD player, well, it does have this timer. And the timer is like 3.3333 minutes. So if you switch it over, you know, flip it twice, and it will give you 10 minutes exactly. Now what happens... At the flip of the timer, or actually about three and a half minutes in on the CD, you'll hear this gong. Dong! And what that means is you have exactly so many seconds, like 30 or so, to get from wherever you're at back to the center. And you do that by rolling the symbol. So, like if I'm over here in Mystery World, I gotta roll, what is that, two running guys in order to get onto the next tile. Oh, there's one. Oh no. Oh no, those bad die bad. But those get canceled out, so I'm good. And here's the other one. So now I go there. And now I need a key and a blue uh, running guy in order to get into that one. One, one. And poof, there, I'm back in the middle. If you can do that before the, the uh, you hear the door slam on the soundtrack, then you are good but if you don't make it back in time you lose one of your dice Boop. it's gone out of your pool and then it makes the game that much harder think about the black dice if you roll a black die that die is frozen you can't use it anymore it's stuck the only thing that can cancel that out is a yellow die yay so if you roll a yellow die and you have a stuck die over here you get to pick that die back up and a yellow die, the nice thing is, it works for up to two black dice. So if I had two black dice sitting over here on the side, and I roll the yellow die, I'm not going to keep doing it, roll the yellow die, then I could pick all three of them up, because they're released. Now if at any point you ever have all of your dice black, that means they're all locked and you can't do anything, you're frozen in time. You have to take, there are two bonus gems sitting on the side right? You would have to take one of those gems and put it back on the card, basically eliminating some of your effort that you made in placing a gem in the temple in the first place. Put that back on the card, and then you get to pick up all your dice and re-roll again. If it happens twice in a game, well, you have two gems. You can do it twice. But if it happens a third time, you lost, man. Your luck sucks, and the game is over. Now, what I did was I downloaded it onto my nice fancy phone right from the Queen Games website so that I didn't have to get a CD player. It's free. It took me like three minutes to do. So there it is. That's what it sounds like when it starts. See? So I'm just sitting around. I'm, I'm, I'm flexing my rolling fingers. Right? Getting ready because in 20 seconds it's going to start going. Okay? You ready? We're going to escape. <gasps> there it goes. Oh, okay. So I start rolling dice. I'm trying to get to here. Okay, I rolled two of those. There I go. I'm right there. Now, I want to get to this next tile right here. So I need two running dudes to discover it. Well, there's one. There's two. So I pick a tile out of the pile. It always goes with the stairway going down, attaching to the tile you're coming from. So I've discovered it. 
but I can't go there yet. I have to roll the key and the running dude. So I roll again. And I'm rolling frantically. There, I rolled it. I get to go there. Now, oh, I want to place the gem here. It takes four of those. Uh, uh, well, there's one. Oh, I'm going to save that in case I roll a, a bad guy. Oh, two, three. Oh, come on, I got two dice. A uh, four, yes! I get to take a gem from here, place it there, and now I'm ready to go to the next room. So, what do I need to go to the next room? Well, I need two running dudes. One, two. I got it, so I get to draw another tile. And I'll place it right here. Ooh, this is one of those special rooms that's got three gems. Now, this is where multiple players comes in handy. Handy? Handy. If you have three players in here and you all rolled at the same time in order to get ten torches, you get to place three gems in this room. If you roll seven torches, you can place two gems. But, you know, I'm just one dude, so I can only roll four torches and place one gem in this room. So, that's what I attempt to do. And the game goes on from there. You keep building and building until you finally find the exit tile and you place that at the end of the game your goal is to get to the exit tile all the players get to the exit tile and however many gems you have left you have to roll that many blue keys on your dice and if you do before the soundtrack ends you've escaped everybody has to escape though for you to win otherwise you're all doomed because you're attached at the stomach by various centrifugal devices and you have to be careful that a giant clam doesn't come and bite you Rawr! but that is escape oh I forgot to mention one thing the advanced uh, expansions the expansions once you've played the basic game a couple of times you want to use all the expansions and this includes the curses which involves these when you have a tile that has this symbol on it you pull a curse and the curses do different things and you're stuck and you can get rid of the curses by rolling the symbols on the bottom like this curse I think destroys one of your dice but if you roll three torches red torches you get your die back also it's in order to help you because it makes the game pretty tough oh there goes the gong I'm supposed to run all the way back to the middle so I'd have to roll two of those guys oh my gosh oh okay I did it now I gotta roll a key and a blue and a running dude. Well, there's my key. Oh, that die is locked. Oh, that die is locked. And there's the running dude. And now I'm here. So I'm safe. The you can also get treasures uh, by going into a room that has the treasure icon on it, and you get to pull from the treasure pile. Those do various things as well. For example, some treasures can give you double torches automatically, or double keys automatically, or allow you to teleport, or allow you to get all your dice back, or give you an extra gem that you can use. Uh, some of the curses are you can't speak, or you cannot enter or discover a chamber. That would suck. Uh, there's other things like that in the game and so once you've gotten used to the basic game which only takes about two plays three plays at the most then you add in these expansions and it adds a lot of challenge to it and that's escape from Queen Games okay so I like the outfit so I'm still wearing it sue me the rules for this game are not difficult, but 9 times out of 10, the first game somebody plays will be a disaster. Rolling dice frantically, asking questions, building a long line of tiles so that it takes you too long to get back to the start tile. At the end of the first game, most new players will be panting with a wild look in their eyes and will say, Okay, I understand now. Let's play it again. Game 2 will usually come out a win for the players. Then you introduce curses and treasures, and from then on, it gets hard to predict. A warning for certain players. This is one of those fast-paced action-type games. Players who need time to think or don't like being rushed will probably hate this game. It's a great game to play with the kids, 
but probably not with the grandparents. One of the curses involves remaining silent, and another requires you to place one hand on your head. Some people might find this annoying. So basically, make sure you play it with the right group and you'll have an exciting time. A few hints for you. First off, if you roll a black and a yellow face at the same time, keep on trucking. They cancel each other out, even if you roll two black faces. Secondly, it's okay to save a yellow face to the side for when you need it. This is a common tactic used by players. Just remember to pick the yellow die back up when you actually use it. If you accidentally cheat, don't sweat it. It's just a game. I found myself two rolls ahead and then realized that I had rolled a black face before and I should have removed that die. You just chastise yourself mentally for a second and keep on trucking. The more you play, the less that will happen. Overall, this is a good game. If you don't mind moving fast and thinking on the fly, then you should really get a kick out of Escape, the Curse of the Temple from Queen Games. The components for the game are top-notch, and the game is literally only 10 minutes long. Plus, it takes less time than that to learn how to play it. So, this would be a good game to pick up if you're looking for something that you can open up and be playing with your family or friends in just a few minutes. Actually, it comes with a CD as well, but I was able to go to their site with my phone and download the same stuff that's on the CD, the soundtrack, onto my phone like in three minutes, and then I just used my phone, and it worked perfectly. So there. Thanks for joining me in this review of Escape, the curse from the temple, of the temple, <laughs> from Queen Games. Let me know if you found this review helpful by leaving a comment or sending me an email at Elliot underscore Miller at Voice of e .com. I'm also Mylantis on Board Game Geek. Make sure to subscribe to the Voice of E channel on YouTube. I'll have plenty of gaming, entertainment, and comic book coverage this year, and it should be a lot of fun. So far, it is. I'm trying. I'm a trying. Whoa! -ho -ho! Thanks again. And until next time, keep your mind. You need that signal. We need more time.